As quickly as the competitive landscape for Fortnite evolved, so did the prize pools. And as time continues to move forward, Epic is making it much, much easier for players to hop into Fortnite as their first competitive esport. This means that so many of you guys are probably not completely used to the nerves associated with high level, high pressure competitive environments. So regardless if you guys are having trouble keeping your temperament at a controlled level, or you're simply making too many mistakes under high pressure situations, this video is going to be the ultimate guide for you guys to improve your mentality in Fortnite. So first we're going to be discussing what the best professional athletes in the world do to contain their nerves. And then we're going to talk about a lot of tips that you guys are going to use to keep your mentality in check throughout long cash cups and other tournaments. So if you guys are excited, you guys know the drill, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and leave a like if you're excited for this kind of content. <laughs> and you guys already know how much work I put into this channel. So showing some appreciation back would mean a lot to me. And go ahead and leave a comment down below and tell me what you guys want to see in the next one. With that said, let's get right into it. Alrighty guys, so the first topic we're going to talk about in this video as promised is staying calm under pressure. Now this is something I personally struggled a lot with in the past, so I'm on the same boat as you guys here. But after doing extensive research on the topic, I think I found something that you guys are going to be interested in. The phenomenon commonly known as the quiet eye has been seen among top athletes in all fields. What is the quiet eye you might ask? Simple, hyper focusing your vision on a singular object that you intend to use motor skills on. Now the Atlantic newspaper covered the quiet eye in 2015 and they sum it up pretty nicely. I'm gonna read you a little excerpt from that. The concept known as the quiet eye theory is deceptively simple. Before you perform an action, you focus your gaze on the salient aspects of your goal, the rim, the catcher's mitt, the malignant tissue, and so on. In recent years, using eye tracking technology, researchers have found that locking onto the relevant stimulus during the right time frame, typically a few hundred milliseconds before, during, and after the movement, greatly improves your chances of success. The Atlantic adds later on, but quiet eye encompasses more than vision. It's about attention too. The gaze is a key factor in the brain's ability to concentrate on the essential details rather than ancillary noise. In a study published this spring by researchers at the University of Exeter in the UK, the scientists found a clear link between a person's ability to store information in short-term memory, a good measure of the ability to focus, and their ability to use the quiet eye approach. Now you might be thinking, wow, I already look at my screen when I build, so what am I being taught here? But it's more than just that, guys. You see, the application of the quiet eye here is that you want to be honing in on one singular application every single time, whether it be one build, one edit, one shot, whatever, you're focusing on one thing at a time. And to further prove that the quiet eye has some merits to build off of, The Atlantic went and looked at two NBA teammates that had starkly different free throw shooting percentages and analyzed them. One had a 39% free throw shooting record while the other had a nearly 90% success rate at the free throw line. What they noticed in the dude that had a 90% free throw rate was the quiet eye, while the 39% shooter definitely did not pose that kind of hyper awareness. So I've been using this approach for a little while guys and my personal take on it is that because I'm focusing so much on what's happening in game, the individual edits, the individual thoughts, etc. It's actually pulled me so far away that I can't concentrate on being nervous. I have to be so hyper aware or else I'm not going to be in the game at all. So I guess you could say that I'm drowning out all the nerves because I'm so hyper focused on each individual play. Your mind simply can't focus on nerves if you're putting so much attention towards making your next play in Fortnite. Now my recommendation for you guys is to simply not allow your mind to go into autopilot mode. I know a lot of moves in Fortnite requires repetition which means that your brain has a muscle memory to do specific plays but I still want you to cloud your mind with those things versus clouding your mind with nerves and bad energy in general. Now that we've talked about staying calm in an in-game scenario I think it's time that we switch gears and talk about how you guys are going to stop tilting especially in those high pressure situations. Dreaming, tilting, raging, you name it. I've seen it all. I've done it all. Those are the easiest and most common reactions to a bad beat or a generally unfortunate situation. But becoming an elite player requires that you at least manage your emotions to some extent. Because at the end of the day, you're queuing into another match within the next minute or two. So you got to get over the beat and you got to do it in a timely manner. So tip number one to avoid tilting, set realistic goals. Regardless if you're just playing casual zone wars, hopping into arena match, or playing in the biggest tournament of your life, setting realistic goals is going to set you up for success. You you see, you should be setting goals based off of your previous achievements and working from there. Because if you haven't even placed in the top 1000 in any event, and then you say, oh, I want to get top 100 in this event, I feel it, and then you, one game doesn't go your way, well, your chances of getting top 100 are out of the equation, and you're going to end up tilting because of it. Instead, saying, hey, you know what, I want to do well, I want to make good decisions, and 
if I get into the top 1,000 in this event, I'll be content. That's a very solid compromise of a goal. Also, that segues pretty nicely to the other side of my point. What kind of goals you want to make? For me personally, both in Fortnite and in my IRL life, I've almost entirely removed numerical goals altogether. Numerical goals as in like reaching a certain number to be satisfied. Instead, I'll make qualitative goals or goals that are revolved around the quality of what I'm doing as a test of merit. So I'm going to give you guys an example of a qualitative goal, not specifically involved with Fortnite, but a qualitative goal in general. For me, it's my YouTube channel. So what YouTubers will often do is they'll look at their subscriber count and they'll say, by this date, I want to be at this amount of subscribers. And for some point in time, that was me as well. But now I set my goals directly around what I can control, which is the amount of videos and the quality of the videos that I output. So my goal is to upload two to three videos a week on YouTube. Videos that I think a lot of people do enjoy. Now a side effect is that I'm going to grow my channel, hopefully. But that's not what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about making the best content possible. And for the scope of Fortnite, I want you guys to have the same mentality. Make a goal based on your own decision making. Make a goal based on your own mentality. Say, if I don't tilt for this whole tournament, no matter how I do, I'm going to be happy with myself. Or for this whole tournament, as long as I think I'm making good decisions and disengaging or taking fights that I think are worth it, then that's going to be my goal. Don't make goals based on getting X amount of placement or X amount of numbers, especially if they're unrealistic, because then when you're not achieving them, you're going to get mad, you're going to tilt easier, and we're going to try to avoid tilting. With better goals set in place, I think it's time that we hit the nail on the head and talk about how to deal with tilting right after getting eliminated. Because let's face it, most of those epic gamer moments happen right after you die, get L2 spammed by controller player, or get someone to W key right into your box. So I'm just going to spill the beans and say this right now. It's okay to rage in moderation. As my good friend Ninja once said, it's not just a game. If you have passion for something, you can't have that mindset. So while I do think it's okay to get a little bit heated in those high pressure scenarios, we really do have to look at the second half of Ninja's tweet to really understand where the learning experience is. There's always something to learn and always room for improvement, never settle. Wow, and if that's not motivating, I don't really know what is. So I guess what I'm trying to nudge in your direction is that you guys need to take bad experiences and turn them into positive ones by learning something from them. So give yourself 30 seconds to even one minute to rage, to get all your emotions out, to vent, whatever. But then right after that, I want you guys to instantly go into educational mode. Think about what happened that led you into that scenario where you died or that led you to an unoptimal situation. What led to someone wanting to W key and what you could have done to prevent that. All of this stuff should be going through your mind before you start your next game such that you could learn from it. And then when you hop onto the battle bus again, that's going to be your understanding. Because if you just rage, and scream at the monitor for 10 minutes and you're not learning anything from it you're not becoming a better player and what is all that practice doing for you nothing now i should say that there are some unique situations where if you get really unlucky multiple times in a row or rng is really really screwing you some days if you absolutely cannot hold your temperament then i suggest that you guys properly decompress yourself by going into creative jumping into pub matches and just chilling keeping your mechanics warm just doing something to get your mind off things for a little bit until you're calmed enough where you can jump back into the tournament and have a better state of mind and while we're on the topic of rng that actually segues me perfectly into my next point not blaming RNG unless there's a really good reason which there probably isn't listen I understand that RNG is a perfect excuse for a lot of scenarios listen RNG is something that everyone deals with everyone's pissed off at and guess what RNG can't argue back so if you blame something on RNG then that's it blame it on RNG and go on with your life but at the same time what does blaming things on RNG actually accomplish for you nothing it doesn't teach you anything it doesn't put you in a better headspace it just allows you to deflect blame now if you guys really want to get better which if you guys are at this point in the video then obviously you guys are interested in bettering yourself as a Fortnite player why the hell are you guys gonna make excuses for yourself when in reality you need to take accountability because because taking accountability is going to allow you to get better at the game and have a better mentality in the process. And I say the word accountability because although this next season of competitive Fortnite is going to be solo FNCS, well guess what? Epic has already announced that season 4 is going to be trios. And trios means that you have a lot more people on your team. You have two teammates that you could easily deflect blame onto. And when season 4 comes around, I'm probably going to reintroduce this topic of having a good mentality. But instead, I'm going to gear it around a team-based scenario where you have two teammates. And we're definitely going to talk about about how you're going to take accountability in every scenario and also how you're going to constructively criticize your teammates when they make an incorrect decision. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to cover it when the time is right. In conclusion, I think we can all agree that playing competitive Fortnite is heavily reliant on a good mindset, both when we're talking about a micro and a macro sense. Whether you're tired of choking your mid-game fights or you simply want to stop being in a bad 
the headspace an hour and a half into your cash cup, I think this video sums things up pretty nicely. You're going to use the aforementioned tips to stay calm. And when push comes to shove and you're in a situation where you do get eliminated, you're going to know how to react to that. And we'll quickly move on to the next game relatively unscathed. So there you guys have it. That's the video. That's all I have for you guys today. Once again, make sure to use my code HINDOG in the item shop if you guys are about to make a purchase and want to support me. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't done so already. And leave a like on the video to help me get on the algorithm. Once again, your support has been absolutely insane to me. So I want to once again thank each and every one of you guys. With that said, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.